Welcome back to Let's Play Cannons, Generation for the PC, in the last episode. Um, what happened to you? No, let me think here. Let me think. Um. Oh yeah, we got home, rearranged the furniture a little, the dog's barking outside, and now we continue. Uh, Kiko-san. Please don't invite everyone you meet in the street to breakfast. And someone shut that dumb dog up! I say this with a sigh, or possibly the other way round. Hand the cheek saying no more, she disappears into the kitchen. As always. The dog had to start barking as soon as I hit the record button, didn't he? Or she, which one is it? You could try showing a little restraint too. It's not like the second time the dog has had, like, made loads of interruptions in my videos. Well, in this LP, anyway. There's more to come in the Pokemon LP for that. Thus, she excuses herself, smiling as she tops her second helping with... Shibazaki, or whatever that is. Since when did we have Japanese-style breakfast, anyway? I could swear it was boiled eggs and toast yesterday. So, she produced a full traditional Japanese breakfast? Didn't realize this was a restaurant. What's the present about cooking? What about you? Can you cook? You sound confident enough. Theft? Uh, cooking? No offense, Ayu, but I'd never have guessed. On the other hand, I have to concede that the probability of her possessing culinary skill isn't absolutely zero. With one last glance at the puzzled Ayu, I turn my attention to my newly arrived breakfast. Mine's rice with shizaki, or whatever the hell that is, I don't know how to pronounce these Japanese food. My aunt's mastery of Japanese cuisine. <sighs> I can't pronounce today for some reason. I know how to pronounce it, I just can't think, oh, screw it. Is of course complete. No, 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 no. I don't know, I can't remember. You stop talking while other people are talking, man. Shut up and stop being so rude. Is there really any chance I'd eat Ivy's food? No way! No. I might find myself eating Nayuki's cooking, but I live with her. I really don't see myself ever eating Ayu's. I'm sorry, Ayu. I leave the question mark flashing over her head and turn instead to Akiko's cooking. What are you doing today, Ayu? Breakfast over, I politely usher our guest out of the house. It's not ten o'clock yet, just about everywhere will be closed. Uh, searching. She said the other day. You're still looking? Man, I'd make a terrible voice actor. I see. Good luck. Come on, man. A moat. Hmm? Tell Kiko-san I thought. Wait, no, that was your line! But, what, 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 what? You didn't da da hello? You didn't even say that, I must have skipped it. Oh screw, it. I'm gonna use your line instead. Tell the Kiko San, I thought breakfast was delicious, okay? No, that was terrible. Today being a holiday, I had considered offering to help her, but she's out of sight before I find the words. Imagine if that voice was her English voice actor, that would have been terrible. Impatient girl. 
Or maybe this thing she's after really is that important to her. Good luck. Since standing around outside will only get me cold, I don't. Nayuki still isn't down. She's probably still fast asleep, recovering from her daily club-induced exhaustion. I try the television and channel surf for a bit, but there being nothing worth watching, I give up. Almost immediately. I've been living here for over a week now, but that's not really long enough to make any close friends. Not close enough to invite myself over to their homes, or even just to hang out with them. In short, days like this leave me with nothing to do. I suppose I could wake Nayuki. I consider this for a moment, but quickly abandon the idea as inhumane. Maybe I'll just go back to bed. I've had a lot to get used to these past nine days. I'm certainly tired enough. Casting myself backwards into my bed and closing my eyes, I fall asleep almost at once. What's with the way I'm reading these lines? I yawn, my eyes open to a dazzling orange light. Reflectively, I roll away from its source. God only knows how long I've been asleep. Long enough at least for the sun to be well on its way to the west. I reach out for the clock nearest my bedside and squint at the time. 4 p.m. This is about when I'd be getting out of school on an ordinary day. I rouse my body and rotate into a sitting position. It's quiet. Too quiet. Stifling another yawn, I push myself upright and stagger out of my room. No wonder it's quiet. I'm alone in the house. It looks like my aunt and cousin have gone off together to buy something for supper. Feels a bit strange being alone in a house this size. There's altogether too much space around me. It's rather uncomfortable. I burrow into the living room sofa and switch the TV back on. For a while, I allow it to bore me with a sort of daydream soap I'd normally not dream of watching. This too gets old rather quick. Akiko-san and Nayuki show no sign of reappearing. But I don't feel like getting up. Going out is no more appealing than staying here, so I end up staying put. I let the dull shows roll past my eyes. After what seems like an eternity, Nayuki's voice finally floats in from the hall. It sounds like my aunt is with her too. Looks like it. She happily brandishes a shopping bag. Imagine me on like one of those voice tracks, like doing all, all the reading of a book in this voice, still clutching the bag, which I presume contains the curry ingredients. She dashes away into the kitchen. That'd be pretty weird, wouldn't it? Left to my own devices, I immediately switch the TV back on. It seems now to be showing a repeat of some drama series, but frankly, my mind is elsewhere. Hit the music! Supper is over. As I step out into the hall, on my way up to my room, I realize I'm not alone. Hmm? It's Makoto. She seems to be putting her shoes on. She refused to meet my eyes right through supper. Ate quickly and left the table long before the rest of us. It's almost as though she doesn't want me to ask how her interview went. Hey, Makoto! What's with the surprise? She makes to flee, but not quickly enough. I have her by the scruff of her neck. How was the interview? And what happened? And how did it go? 
You failed? Hang on. How come you know already? What on earth did you do? Liar! You're not going anywhere! I drag her back into the living room. Will you stop with that voice? Seriously. Well, what do you want to do, Makoto? I'm talking about work, idiot! I can't shout, people will think I'm insane. I haven't managed to get through to you in any other way yet. Bingo! I pull out the jobs magazines and hold it up to her face once again. Come on, find yourself something. It's, it's supposed to have two U's. That's how I usually see it spelled. This time, Makoto's familiar whimper of despair rouses great interest on Akiku-san's part. It's a job magazine, honest. It's not a porn or anything. What do you shut up about that stupid thing, man? You are... you, you mean? Oh, I completely did not realize what I was reading there. Oh, I didn't even realize how much time has passed. Oh, see you next time, viewers.